Hey everybody, new week, new video. I <laughs> was watching some Instagram reels earlier in the week and this video idea came to my mind. So I thought I would sit down and talk with you about why I stopped being a health coach and why I'm pretty much fed up with everything related to um, like health and wellness influencers. It's just, it's, it's, it's time for this crap to stop. So if you're new to my channel, I lost 80 pounds after my third child was born back in around 2016. Um, I got to the lowest weight that I've ever been by using a program called Trim Healthy Mama. If you don't know what it is, Google it. I'm not going to go into all of that here. But um, at the time, it was, it was really easy. I had three kids. Um, everybody liked the meals that I was making. They were all much um, younger. I hadn't been through several um, really stressful events in my life that came up in like 2016 toward the uh, middle to end of that year. And um, it was just really easy. I did what the book said and the weight came off without a problem. I was um, in my early to mid thirties then it was, it was just a breeze. So after that, I decided that this is, um, this is what I want to do. I want to help other people to do what I've done. So I took a health coaching program by Dr. Sears, became a certified health coach and began coaching people online and locally. I had an office where I did classes and it's just something that I really enjoyed there for a little bit. Um, and then kind of my world came crashing down. My husband got laid off of his job. Um, a couple months later, I ended up having a miscarriage. It was just beyond stressful. And I think on a deep level, my, my body changed. My stress levels changed. My hormones changed. Um, everything really felt like it became upended during that time and I ended up thankfully not long after that getting pregnant with Julian and that pregnancy was awesome because I was um, I had been eating very well um, I had lost all that weight I was exercising so that pregnancy and delivery was a breeze if I could do that uh, um, you know a, how many ever more times um, and not have to deal with the postpartum depression and everything I had going on, I would probably have more kids, but uh, that has not been the story for me. So we're done anyway. Um, so I never focus on weight loss during my first year postpartum because that first year is focused on making milk, growing that baby. Yes, I'm trying to take care of myself, but I'm not, um, you know, full throttle into it. So after Julian turned a year old, I started doing Trim Healthy Mama again. You know, I'd, I'd already done this. I knew what to do and nothing happened. And I kept trying and nothing kept happening. And it got really, really frustrating. So now in a couple of months, Julian's gonna turn seven and I have been through I don't know how many different things. And uh, anyway, um, long story short, what I very quickly figured out is that everybody is so different. And the idea of, oh, you just eat in a calorie deficit and you'll lose weight. That is not true. Um, I worked with a certified nutritionist um, or dietitian. I don't remember what her credentials were, but you know, she had actually gone to school for this. And, um, you know, we identified that I was in a calorie deficit, not so much that I was starving myself at all, but I was eating an appropriate amount of calories to put me in a deficit and my weight still wasn't budging. Um, and so through all of this, what I realized is that weight loss is so much more than, um, than what a lot of people think it is. And I realized that I was guilty of going into this saying, you know, as long as you follow what the book says to do, you're going to lose weight. Um, and that's, that's not, that's not the case 
at all for a lot of people. So, um, and I had those clients, I had those clients that were doing what they were supposed to do. They weren't losing weight. And then I felt bad. I took that as like, that it was my personal responsibility to make sure they lost weight, even though, you know, I had no idea what their hormones were doing. I could not control what they put in their mouth or how much they moved their body. And so it became this really personal thing for me. Um, and I took it, I took it really badly when, when my clients didn't get the results they were looking for. And I really felt like they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. And now I completely understand where they were. So anyway, that is a, that is both a recap and the main reason why I stopped being a health coach, but it goes beyond that. So if you've ev um, spent very much time on, you know, looking at TikTok or Instagram reels or YouTube shorts or any of that, you know the health and wellness influencers out there that I'm talking about. Um, and you see these people walking through the grocery store and they'll pick up things and they'll tell you why they're so bad for you. And what I've found over the years is that I started with a very reasonable, very sane and balanced approach to health and nutrition. And social media has caused that um, to kind of go off the rails. And it wasn't something that I really recognized was happening while it was happening. What I began to notice um, was that, you know, I could go to the grocery store and I could have a recipe for a healthy meal, but in my head, I would hear these people like, oh, you want to eat vegetables? Well, they can't be canned because you don't know what is in the lining of that can. And they can't be frozen because for whatever reason, I don't even know why they bash frozen vegetables. Um, and, you know, if you buy fresh vegetables, that's still not good enough because they're not organic um, and these pesticides are going to kill you. So it's like you go to the grocery store or you have this food in your home that you want to prepare and you're doing the best you can. And still this little voice in your head is telling you that what you're doing isn't good enough. And you're finally like, you know, forget it. I quit. I'm going to go eat a frozen pizza. Um, and that literally is the point that I got to. I'm just like, you know what? Nothing I do is good enough. You know, don't eat, don't eat, um, regular processed sugar. You know, if you're going to eat sugar, eat coconut sugar, but still don't eat coconut sugar because it's going to, um, raise your insulin levels. And I mean, it's just like blah, blah, blah. And never mind you have people like, Bobby, whatever his last name is, who will get on here and in one video he's telling you cane sugar is bad, but in this next video you've got um, him showing a product that just has a little bit of cane sugar and he says that's okay. Um, and then, you know, promoting something like a $30 yogurt. This is not reasonable. You know what I mean? It's like you have so much conflicting advice out there. It's like, what do you do? Um, so, what I believe happens because of these um, wellness influencers on social media is that we get all these messages in our head and we're trying to do the best for ourselves and we're trying to do the best for our families. But what ends up happening is we're hearing all this and we're trying to process and go, okay, what is reasonable for me? Um, what is going to be the best for me? But it's raising our stress levels and it, you know, our, our cortisol is going up. We, um, we're getting more anxiety over what we're eating. Anytime we eat something, let's say we, where we go to a birthday party or it's a, you know, heck you, you've had a bad day at work and you want a piece of chocolate cake. Then you feel so incredibly guilty about eating that thing, which might've been in moderation that you end up just in this downward spiral feeling like nothing you ever do is good enough that, you know, you're a terrible person, you're a terrible human being, and you're killing your body, and you are contributing to potential chronic disease in your kids because you let them have a donut. I mean, this needs to stop. This honestly needs to stop because what we're doing is we're making ourselves sick with the stress levels of trying to not be sick by what we put in our bodies I mean, what is, what is honestly worse, what we're eating or how we're feeling about what we're eating? You know what I mean? So it's, 
and and then where you end up is you the guilt the guilt that comes along with not not fitting that image that is portrayed online of being able to afford all of these um, organic products, all of these fancy supplements. Oh, you've got this problem. Well, you need this, you know, $150 supplement being sold by an MLM company, which guys, I'm sorry, I've been very guilty of being in that boat um, with thinking that, you know, there's this thing and it's the end all be all. And what I'm, what I have found is that, yeah, there are some companies who sell really good stuff that are MLMs, but I think by and large, if it is sold on that model, there is a massive problem. You know, um, those, those products are marked up way too much and I don't even want to know how much money I've spent over the years in that because I was sucked in thinking, you know, I, I need to share this. I need to um, I need to use this and be a walking billboard and blah, 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 blah. I mean, they catch people, especially stay-at-home moms, who are in this fight of, you know, wanting to have a better life, wanting to feel better, wanting to be healthier, but at the same time wanting some financial independence. And it's like, they get you. And I've got people like that. And if you're one of them, I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, it's it's this cycle. It's this madness, this craziness that absolutely needs to stop. What you do is you do the best that you can. And that can vary day by day. You know, if you are raising kids or, and, or you've got a stressful job or whatever's going on and you do not have the mental ability to meal plan and cook three hot meals a day, do the best you can. You know, if that is going to Sam's or Costco and buying some of their pre-cooked meals, I'm here to tell you that's okay. You know, if you need to put a chicken pot pie in the oven or a pan of manicotti in the oven, I mean, I don't know, in my head, that's better than going to McDonald's and getting a double cheeseburger. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But even if your best that day is going to McDonald's and getting a double cheeseburger, you are fed. Your kids are fed. You're doing the best that you can. Maybe tomorrow will be better. And never mind the fact that not everybody has the budget to go out here and buy $500 worth of organic fruits and vegetables so your private chef can cook it. You do the best that you can. And... That that's kind of where I'm at. We need I need peace. I need peace in my life. I need peace in my mind and in my home, especially when it revolves around food. And one thing that we're trying to teach our kids is that your body requires certain things to function the way that it's supposed to. Um, you need the macronutrients, the micronutrients. Um, and you, you're not going to get all that if you just eat cereal all day, you know, you need fruits and vegetables. You need, um, I suppose you don't need for the vegans and vegetarians out there, but we, um, choose to incorporate meat into our lives and dairy. I'm not going to demonize dairy. A lot of people out there do. We won't go into the, you know, the commercial, um, food industry in this country with the way dairy is produced. We try to buy ours from a local farmer, but that's beside the point. Um, you know, we try to teach them about moderation and about balance and about what your body needs and about, you know, doing the best that you can. And anyway, that that's a long kind of dr sideways um rant about what's currently going on online these days, but it, it all goes into why I stepped away from that world of health coaching and, you know, being this person that, that constantly posts all this, um, wellness content online. I just, I don't do that anymore because that's not the place that I've been in for a while. Um, and I do want to make a video and talk more about what I've discovered 
with the help of um, several doctors as far as like um, hormones go um, and, and different things about how my body works and why things have changed um, since I lost those 80 pounds and why it's not so easy um, this go round. But um, I am going to win this battle. I am going to to get um, back to the place that I want to be. I know that I've made strides with my health and, um, and getting things put back the, the way that they're, they're supposed to be, but it does, I think the aspect of your mental health and how, how you approach this, I, I really feel like it has more to do with your success than a lot of people think. And if you're constantly feeling shame for what you're putting in your mouth, or you're constantly feeling like you're not good enough and that you're a failure, you're not going to get where you want to be. So we have to learn how to let go of that and, um, and come back to reality and sanity when it comes to the food we put in our mouth. So anyway, uh, thanks for listening to me for the past 16 and a half minutes. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below, if you agree or disagree or whatever it is. And, um, I'll see you next week with another video. God bless.